So, Joe, uh, we, we often turn to you to make sense of the nonsensical. So uh, well, let's go to Adam Schiff because he's nonsensical. And he was on CBS's Face the Nation yesterday with Margaret Brennan. And I just want to play just a, just a short clip here. And I would like for you to translate this from, for us from insanity to English. Here's Adam Schiff. Uh, and given that we already have the call record, we don't need the whistleblower who wasn't on the call to tell us what took place during the call. We have the best evidence of that. What in holy hell? Well, what you are listening to is a liar who happens to also be the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee and who has been given responsibility by the Speaker for conducting a so-called official impeachment inquiry which, of course, does not exist because there has been no formal impeachment vote on the floor of the House. Uh, Adam Schiff, who did everything he could to create the image of this miraculous so-called whistleblower, who is not a whistleblower under the law, but is, in fact, nothing more than an anonymous informant, um, first he said this person was so important that they had to protect him or her, keep them secret, take their testimony in secret, cover their head with an ISIS hood, whatever you want to do. Uh, Now he says the whistleblower is not important at all. We have the transcript, and that's all we need to impeach the president. Uh, Adam Schiff is so disreputable that it's it's almost impossible to define him or to talk about him. I, I don't know what else to say except he has brought disrepute upon the House, but apparently the Democrats don't think disrepute upon the House matters anymore. Why, in your view, does he not want the whistleblower to testify? Because the whistleblower cannot, first of all, it's not a whistleblower. It's an anonymous informant. I'm going to keep saying that every chance I get. This person, this anonymous informant, could never withstand cross-examination because this person is a liar. This person made up stuff that is in that uh, submission, this so-called complaint, that the idiot inspector general of the intelligence community took as serious. Now, look, look where this story has gone. This vital witness is now no longer vital. Right. Now, this vital witness that the inspector general was goo-goo over, gaga over, when he sent his, ref- uh, his notice to the Hill shows you how dumb the inspector general for the intelligence community is. This guy, Michael Atkinson, could not pass a first-year law test. He's such a moron. He didn't even analyze correctly the whistleblower in... Uh, law under the Inspector General Act, because this is not a whistleblower under the technical definition. This is nonsense. And this person, Atkinson, I am convinced, was in on this from the beginning. Well, speak- the IG for the intelligence community cannot be that dumb. He can't be that stupid. He can't not have figured out that this guy was a fraud, and yet he went along with all of it. Now, ask yourself this question. Can that person really be that bad a lawyer to be the inspector general and think that all of these accusations were true? Michael Atkinson is a disaster. He should be fired. Well, you're talking about people being in on it. We do know that Adam Schiff's staff was working with this, as you say, informant prior to him actually filing the the whistleblower complaint. Uh, And in so doing, may be exposing himself to some revelations should this person testify before House Republicans. Is that, do you think, a part of Adam Schiff's consideration, that he doesn't want to open himself up to that kind of scrutiny? Listen, this inquiry now is about Adam Schiff more than it is about this so-called whistleblower, this anonymous informant. Adam Schiff created this whole issue with his staff behind the scenes, worked with this person, created this false narrative, blathered it all over the world with the complicity of the mainstream media, and now, because it's falling apart, and it's obvious that the uh, anonymous informant is a liar, it is obvious that Schiff and his staff worked with somebody who used to work with Biden, who was a former NSC staff member. This is clearly a fictitious creation of a group of people creating a false narrative about impeachment. Of course, Adam Schiff doesn't want this person to testify because the person will have to commit perjury in order to tell his story. So, so Joe, this is we keep seeing the same thing over and over again. We see the same thing with Adam Schiff. We see the same thing with the Democrats, you know, launching these accusations against the president, saying, I have proof. I've seen the proof. They did the same thing to Justice Kavanaugh recently. What can the Republicans do to stop this from continuing to happen? The same story over and over again. 
Well, they can't do anything to stop Democrats from lying, because that is a congenital uh, condition of Democrats now in the House of Representatives. So what they have to do is fight back with a narrative of their own. That's extremely difficult, because Republicans are very bad at messaging. They have been for more than 20 years. They continue to be horrible. They fight amongst themselves. And when you have Republican senators like Mitt Romney, who ingratiates himself to himself, with himself, about himself, it's very difficult to construct uh, a narrative and a solid line on behalf of the president. So it's, I have no idea how Republicans are going to fight it back. There are some very good people out there countering this. Uh, Doug Collins, Mark, Matthew, uh, Mark Meadows, yes. uh, Jim Jordan, uh, Devin Nunes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, John Ratliff. But, but the point is, when you have the mainstream media complicit in the false narrative, just watch Chuck Todd over the weekend. I mean, he's disgusting. To think that he sits in the seat that Tim Russert used to have. Tim Russert is turning over in his grave watching this Democratic hack sit in the Meet the Press chair. I go back and think of Lawrence E. Spivak when I was a little boy watching Meet the Press. And now look at this awful person, Chuck Todd, sitting in that seat. Chuck Todd is an embarrassment to the concept of news. He's just a hack. It's awful. So how do you fight that? It's tough going, believe me. Yeah, one of the ways Republicans are trying to fight it is demanding that these hearings Adam Schiff is running become public. Asked about it over the weekend, Schiff said that he doesn't want to make them public because that would just help the president's defense. Joe, this has reached insane levels. Uh, here's the problem with Adam Schiff. Everything is a fraud. The, 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 the hearings in secret are designed to allow them to leak out selectively pieces right. of information and make it look like something's happening before the committee, which is not happening before the committee. Um, anything that Adam Schiff says about this process is, of course, false. Of course they don't want public hearings, because if they were really having true hearings, there would be a, you would see just how ridiculous this narrative that they have created is. But they are doing a superb job, they, the Democrats, of creating a false narrative with the complicity of the media. All you have to do is watch Jake Tapper and uh, uh, Chuck Todd on Sunday and listen to them moan and groan as Republicans speak under their breath and then literally spout lies about Joe Biden saying that's never been proven. I mean, you have to be a moron or literally a liar, which is Chuck Todd and Jake Tapper are. They are news liars. They are not news anchors. They are news liars. They are complicit in the Democratic narrative. Of course, Chuck Todd used to work for Tom Daschle. Jake Tapper used to work on the House for Democrats. These are Democratic staffers who've become TV anchors. Yes. This is not even a close call. These people are frauds. All right, we're going to dig into this more with Joe DeGeneva, specifically the Bidens, Ukraine, Rudy Giuliani, his his associates, and a whole lot more when we get back here. All right, we're here with Joe DeGeneva. And so, uh, making sense of the world for us here. Joe, can you make sense of Hunter Biden? Where is Hunter? The president asking that question at a rally, uh, keeping the pressure up on Joe Biden and his son. In response, Hunter Biden has stepped down from that Chinese board of BHR Equity Investment Fund Management Company. He's stepped down from there, and now uh, Joe Biden claiming, you know, look, I don't talk to him about any of this, and there's no proof that he made any money from this. We, you know, uh, there's nothing to see here. You got the media running uh, coverage for him with Chuck Ty tweeting out, politics ain't beanbag, but it isn't supposed to be this either. We all need to play a role in not rewarding this kind of of politics. We cannot, in, the president held a campaign rally last night, attacked Hunter Biden. We cannot in good conscience show it to you. So so they're, they're using uh, this of the president attacking Hunter Biden for a reason to not even show the president's rally. Uh, it, can can the Biden survive this onslaught from the president? Theoretically, yes. But here's the point. Now, just, let's just analyze what happened yesterday. Hunter Biden <coughs> resigned from the board that he said that he got one point two billion from from his investment firm. Now, all of a sudden, the appearance of a conflict of interest has become so obvious that he has to resign. Now, if it's, if it's big now, if it's this bad, why wasn't it bad while his father was the vice president of the United States? It was actually worse when his father was vice president. Now, his father is not a public official. He's a private citizen running for office. Why is it important now, when his father cannot influence policy, 
than it was when his father was vice president and was running the policy in two countries that Hunter Biden was getting business from. This is a joke. And Chuck Todd, let's revisit that, that clown one more time. They don't want to run the fact that Joe Biden and his son were a corrupt pay-to-play machine. It's so obvious that a juvenile journalist could, say, could see the appearance of a conflict of interest here, let alone a real conflict of interest. It's pretty obvious that the Biden family was in business with the United States government to make millions and millions and millions of dollars. I mean, this is a joke. And for Chuck Todd to sit there and say they're not going to be complicit in the president's narrative, oh, no, they're going to be complicit in Joe Biden's narrative, a false narrative about no conflict. He sat there yesterday, uh, did Chuck Todd and Jake Tapper, and say, there's no proof that Joe Biden did anything wrong. There's no proof. This is a completely debunked theory. These people are sick. They hate this president so much that they are devoid of journalistic integrity. Make no mistake about it. Joe Biden had every conflict of interest in the law under the federal code that you can think of. The appearance of a conflict of interest. Remember, the Dems and the progressives and all these people in these goody-two-shoes think tanks used to say that the appearance of a conflict of interest was just as bad as a real conflict of interest. Now they've forgotten that. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? It still is worse than an actual conflict. Just think of this. The vice president's son on Air Force Two to China, to Ukraine, getting millions and millions of dollars in fees than a billion and a half dollars in investment to his investment fund. Now, the Democrats say there's nothing wrong with that. Now, you have to be sick to believe that. Joe, I want to ask you about uh, late developing news last week. Uh, uh, there were two men, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, who are uh, reported as associates of Rudy Giuliani, who were arrested, federal prosecutors unsealing charges on Thursday against them uh, about efforts to gather damaging information in Ukraine about President Trump's political opponents, namely Joe Biden. These men were arrested for campaign finance law violations. Do you know these men? What do you make of these charges? And we see reports that Rudy Giuliani is also being investigated. What do you know about well, all of them? Uh, first of all, we know, we've know we known Rudy for 37, almost 40 years. Victoria and I have worked with Rudy, both as professionals and as friends. And when Rudy was retained by the president to investigate what happened in 2016, uh, he was presented evidence by investigators, a former senior U.S. attorney investigator in New York, about evidence in Ukraine and was given the names of witnesses. And so Rudy started to investigate. Uh, when he decided he might go to Ukraine, he, Rudy, he asked us, listen, I may meet some people over there that I can't represent because I represent the president, so I need you you and Victoria to represent these witnesses, to represent them as whistleblowers, to take them to the Department of Justice or the FBI. We agreed to do that. Uh, he never went to Ukraine. He never had an opportunity to have us represent any of these people. And so uh, that was the end of that. We did meet uh, Mr. Parnas and Mr. Fruman. Mr. Parnas, as a result, we, be, we eventually came to represent a Ukrainian national by the name of Dmitry Firtash, who was under indictment in Chicago and is fighting extradition in Vienna. And in the course of doing that, Mr. Firtash, our client, does not speak English. So Mr. Parnas, who is Ukrainian, does speak English, Russian, and Ukrainian. So we retained him to be our interpreter for our client, uh, Mr. Firtash. Now, uh, with regard to all of these charges in the Southern District, those are all matters that occurred in 2018. They have nothing to do with anything that Rudy or Victoria or I are involved in. Those all predate any of our engagements to deal with this. So that's irrelevant. We have we have no knowledge of any of that. But we wish them well. They're 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 lovely gentlemen. Hmm. All right, Joe. Well, thank you so much. And also, uh, we look forward to, according to Maria Bartiromo, the uh, IG Inspector General report coming out Friday, uh, covering more than just FISA abuse. Says it's as thick as a telephone book. Joe, in 30 seconds, do you know anything about this? I don't now, but it's pretty obvious that it's going to be a devastating indictment of the FBI and the senior Justice Department officials who have continued to lie as they entered private practice, whether it's Sally Yates, Mary McCord, John Carlin. By the way, Michael Atkinson, the IG for the intelligence community, was a senior counsel for John Carlin, who was the assistant AG for the National Security Division, while the FISA false applications were made. What does that tell you about Michael Atkinson? 
It's amazing. Yeah. Always, always a dense news week, and Joe DeGeneva helps sort it out.